I just want to say a little bit about evolutionary psychology. Uh, it's been talked about quite a bit in relation to this stuff to do with sexuality and desire and rape and violence and murder. Uh, and I think it was TJ on the uh, TJ Edge's Life channel that originally kind of brought it up in relation to uh, Stephen Pinker's writing. And I think I was responsible for fanning the flames of that little bit by citing some other stuff um, uh, from Kerry Thornhill and, and, and a guy called Palmer in another book about uh, I can't remember, the social history of rape. So, um, but I'm just not sure how relevant it is, all that evolutionary psychology stuff. But I do think it's worthwhile just... Yeah, I suppose I'm really responding to a video by uh, Varia Blast that I was just reading. Uh, I beg no, I was just looking at. And, um, yeah, I just think it just needs... Yeah, I just need to, some, to say something about that, really. Because there's a bit of a mix going on with some of this stuff about uh, about evolutionary psychology. And it's starting to come out a little bit more like sociobiology, which is a bit different. And also, um, I just think too much emphasis is being placed on it, if I'm honest. The, uh, if I just flesh out the distinction first, the... Um, and this is something that Variablast was talking about in his video. He was talking he was using, talking about evolutionary psychology as if it was the as if what came out of that was the evolution of behaviour. And I know it's sometimes phrased as if as if it is that, but it's not really. Um, I mean even on um, uh, Tubi and Cosmedes site, which is one of the key sites on evolutionary psychology, they they occasionally talk about it as if it's the evolution of behaviour. But the evolution of behaviour is really sociobiology, which is E.R. Wilson's thing from back in the 1970s, and this, which is basically this idea that uh, behaviour that's successful in terms of getting the job done, you know, enhancing our uh, ability to survive and reproduce, that behaviour is reproduced, that behaviour is, is copied. People do it again and again, it's repeated, the individual repeats it, other people, other members of a, uh, a tribe, let's say, would witness that behaviour and, and and they would repeat it. So successful behaviours um, become propagated in a way that memes work. It's kind of that kind of approach. Uh, and that's sociobiology. Evolutionary psychology isn't quite the same as that, although it has some, some overlap. Uh, evolutionary psychology is ultimately about psychology. It's about... It's not about behaviour uh, directly. It's about the the psychology of in this case, modern human beings. And the idea is that the those parts of our psychology that ultimately drive behaviour, things like desire, uh, things like uh, urge, urge to dominate or the urge to submit, or things like uh, emotions like love or fear uh, or hunger or the recognition of beauty or uh, attraction and repulsion... I mean, those kinds of emotional states and cognitive states, uh, the pleasure of finding things out, as Richard Feynman says, th those, the, those kind of psychological functions, um, those, those are the things which come out of evolutionary psychology. That at some past, at some point in our evolutionary history, it, uh, it served the individual who, who felt those things, who, who, who had those things going on in their body and in their brains. It, it served them well to have those things going on, and so they you know, uh, you know, what did they do? They sowed their seeds into the next generation, so to speak. Um, but it is about the psychology of that. It's not about the behaviour directly. Now, of course, it leads to behaviour, and and desire leads to a certain kind of behaviour, and a, a kind of will to power leads to behaviour, and the uh, and and love leads to a certain kind of behaviour, and the the um, the desire to protect leads to a certain kind of behaviour. So what? We're, and the idea of evolutionary psychology is we've got all these things going on, all these little kind of modules going on inside us uh, simultaneously. All of us have these things. This is the idea that, um, to a greater or lesser extent, we all have the uh, the, the mental modules which uh, have evolved over time and which give us those drives and those feelings and those mental capacities. Um, and they drive our behaviour. Now what's really important there is that what shape that behaviour takes is not prescribed within, within the psychology. That, that is malleable and that can change. So for, and it changes from culture to culture. You can kind of see that. You know, all cultures, certainly all the ones that's been found so far, 
have got um, I'm just trying to think of those human uh, human universals, but all human uh, all cultures, for example, have a, a prohibition against incest. Apparently, it's one of the ones that's supposed to be the case, at least. But how that prohibition works is completely different in all cultures, and exactly what pro what form that prohibition takes is different in all cultures. Um, so what actual behaviour comes out of that, it varies enormously. And it varies from individual to individual, and it varies from subculture to subculture, and it varies within a single culture um, according to what kind of situation an individual is put in. Um, so if I can just kind of flesh together an example, and this is just what I'm making up on the spot. We all have this evolved sense of sexual desire, for example. And that's just one of the many, many modules we've got going on according to the ideas of evolutionary psychology. We all have sexual desire. We all also have the desire to love and protect another human being. And it, it doesn't take a genius to see those things stitched together really well. And what you get there is all of the, um, uh, the romance and the uh, pair bonding behaviour and the courtship rituals and the, uh, the, the formation of supportive family units. That's how, you know, given the right situation, that's the kind of thing is emerge. However, you take that same desire module and you uh, bolt it to a violence module and what you end up with is some guy getting raped in a prison. You know, it's, it's the, the same um, Lego bricks are being stuck together in slightly different ways according to the situation and according to all the other kinds of strands of behaviour that are being woven around that. Okay, um, so that, that's what I'm trying to get at with these things. There's a distinction between the evolution of behaviour, which is sociobiology, and the evolution of psychology, which may or may not result in different kinds of behaviours, none of which are stereotypical and none of which are scripted beforehand, um, and all of which are malleable, which is at least some of the tenets of evolutionary psychology. The other thing to say about evolutionary psychology, I should say as well, which is a bit of a rider on this and why I feel a little bit guilty about making a video about it a couple of few days ago, is that it's... It's not great science. It's, it's, it's fascinating and it's compelling. And Stephen Pinker is a brilliant writer and I wish I could write like him. I mean, his books are so lucid and he's really it's perfect, uh, perfectly timed examples he can put in there. He's just a superb writer. Uh, but it's not perfect science. Evolutionary psychology is very controversial science. It's, uh, it's, it's, it, it, it suffers from one of the great flaws of that kind of science, which is it doesn't give falsifiable hypotheses there's no way of testing whether it's accurate or not it's it feels compelling you know in the way that just so stories feel compelling um, which isn't to say that it's not it hasn't got value it doesn't, clearly it does have value but it doesn't necessarily have as much value as some other kind of scientific models there's a really great there was a really great article in scientific american a while back um, pointing out some of the fallacies of uh, what he calls pop evo psych uh, and I'll put a, a link to it on Scribd in the sidebar. Um, yeah, that's that really. I just, I, yeah, I mean, I think it's great that pe that evolutionary psychology is cited, and sociobiology is cited, and people are using that as as narratives. But in a sense, they are just that. They are they are something like myths, really. There's something like explanatory frameworks to help us get to a point where we can talk about stuff. But I don't think we can. I personally wouldn't feel comfortable about looking to evolutionary psychology or sociobiology as um, explanations for this stuff. They're good for providing ideas, but I don't think you can ground stuff down on that there myself. Anyway, thanks for watching.